Okay, we are recording now. This is the Park and Recreation Advisory Board and the Harbor Management Commission meeting for Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. And Dan Silva, our chairman, will be conducting the meeting. Hello, everybody. Um, so we've got the agenda in front of us. I don't see any members from the public. Um, so there's no public comments. Um, I would like to have a motion to move the Keisha Farm Committee update to the front of the meeting. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. Uh, we have Cindy Granblatt here, who is the chairperson of the Keisha Farm. And I wanted her to be here to give an update to everybody on what's going on and uh, you know where we're headed and uh, anything else she's got to add. So Cindy. Go ahead. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay. Thank you, everyone, and thanks to Dan for inviting me to uh, to address the group on the Keisha Farm. Um, if it's okay with you, I could just give you a brief little history of what's gone on between 2017 and tonight, and then I can take any questions that you might have. Does that sound like something the committee would like to hear, Dan? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So many of you know that in 2017, there was a referendum um, that the town uh, put out to the voting public and that it was really the result of Kathy Bagley, who is here tonight, as well as the mayor at the time, who was Mayor Bello, and our former town manager, Jeff Bridges, all of whom um, lent their respected opinions to the purchase, and that the referendum passed in 2017. And I believe if I'm think, looking back on it, that it took about nine to 10 months to finally complete the sale of the property because there were all kinds of other issues with it and things that had to be um, assessed. And I think the property was purchased in late 2018. Um, a new mayor and a new manager stepped forward to try to, you know, to take ownership of the project and Gary Evans called for volunteers from the community um, yeah, to step that. forward that wanted to serve on the committee. And I, I think Dan will agree with me. He put together a really diverse group of people. Yeah. Um, there are people from, well, Dan, of course, from Park and Rec, who has an invaluable point of view. And then there are neighbors. And then there are members of the sports clubs that represent different sports within the community. And then um, there are some very young and innovative people. Uh, a young woman who was a, worked in Hartford on a community-based restaurant using a lot of farm-to-table things. So she's brought a, a great perspective. And, there, and uh, there's people very much interested in farming as well. So I think it's a nine-member committee that meets. And on our first night, we were charged with trying to assess the public desire for the farm. It was not going to be the nine of us that decided, but what we were going to try to do was uh, have a conversation with the community about what you would like to see there, what you would support there, and uh, what our resources were going forward. We, we started immediately on that project of trying to seek out a consultant to manage different um, public meetings and public visioning sessions. And then of course, COVID interfered in 2019 and kind of everything is like pre-COVID and post-COVID. So um, while we did a lot of work pre-COVID and we thought we found a, a consultant that was both financially and it had the great experience that we could use, I, it's completely understandable that it wasn't within the community's resources at the time to go ahead with that. but. In what I think is kind of a silver lining, the town council said that there's a lot of talented people on our committee, and why didn't we try to accomplish the goal of that uh, consultancy? And so I um, have to give a lot of credit to uh, Manager Evans. He was associated with people at the University of Hartford, and he reached out to them. And really, this is something I didn't know, but the University of Hartford has a um, an internship program. It requires many of their students, whether they're in the Barney School of Business or in other different aspects of their study to do some kind of public outreach or internship. And so we met with the Dean of the Barney School of Business at our October meeting. And he had with him the, uh, a woman who's a Wethersfield woman, Brooke Penders, who some of you may know. 
and she is in charge of placing students in these experiences and monitoring them. They were very excited about the potential for the project. Uh, I think they understood exactly what we were looking for. They saw the requests for proposals that went out to the different consultants. And at our November meeting, they're going to come back with a, to us with a outline of their proposed work, what their deliver, deliverables will be for us. And I'm hoping that they will be not only good substitutes, but maybe even a better solution to the problem of getting people from the community to come forward and let us know what they want to see on the property. In the meantime, we've walked the property. It's very exciting. And we talk all the time about opening it up to the public and having walks on the property. There's a little bit of a reluctance on the part of the, um, the town manager because it's not completely cleaned of farming debris. And there's a lot of um, I guess you'd say potential hazards there. So we've, they've been a little bit reluctant to just open it up to people to walk through, but we are gonna try and organize some walks there. Uh, we viewed the barn and we reached out through um, one of our committee members to the, I think it's the Connecticut Historic Preservation Commission. And we had a young woman from the commission come out and look at the barn to see if it could qualify for any historic designation. And all that would mean is a little bragging rights for our barn, but it also <laughs> down the road could mean that there could be grant money that might be available to us that we couldn't get if we didn't have the designation. So that's on the horizon. We're hoping that will come through. And then um, we have our, uh, an opportunity for our first public-private partnership. There's a nonprofit in Wethersfield called the Weathersfield Education Foundation. And they are always looking for projects that will benefit the schools and the community. And they are talking and seem willing to partner with Keisha Farms and the town on trying to restore a greenhouse. The greenhouse exists behind the barn. So I didn't even know it was there. You can't really see it from the street. It's an old fashioned hoop greenhouse covered with vinyl and it's got some fans on either end, but it's in a real state of disrepair. But it's not expensive to repair. It's not a glass greenhouse. It doesn't have a extensive you know, heating system. It already has electricity. And so there's some hope that after the first of the year, we could look on, look to cleaning that up and actually repairing it. We've got people out talking to the farm community in Connecticut for, to see if we could get someone who's done it on their own property to come and help us or advise us on how to do it at Keisha. And then Dan and I have talked a couple of times about how the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts could be involved in this because I think that's one of the best ways to bring people together over this, what I think is going to be a really special community location. And um, the greenhouse needs the wooden, you always see them in greenhouses. They're kind of those wooden stands that the plants grow in. And sometimes they have hoses that are attached to them for irrigation. And that might be after it's cleaned and, and it's not hazardous for them to go in there. That might be something they could build and install for us in the greenhouses. And then the Weathersfield Education Foundation is willing to put up money for teachers. Um, we were thinking elementary age because the wonderful benefit of Keisha is it's right next to an elementary school. Maybe Highcrest would benefit immediately, but hopefully all the schools in time, but they are willing to put up money so that teachers could develop uh, curriculum units that would be devoted to growing food, which kind of ties us in historically and I think shows, again, the opportunities that exist there. And uh, one of the things we're hoping to do is imitate the master plan that exists for Mill Woods. So this is not everything will happen all at once, but hopefully we'll have, at the end of our studies, we'll have a long range plan that no matter who's serving on the committee, they can come and try and help move it forward. So I, I, it doesn't appear that a lot has happened there. If you drive by, it looks exactly like it did two years ago, but there's been a lot going on behind the scenes by some really dedicated people who I think would like to see it become, you know, a, a wonderful Weathersfield resource for all ages. Very good. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything? No. Oh, no. Does that mean I did really well or it was no. just so boring? Yeah. Everybody just started zooming off. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so, Cindy, par part of the expectation from the group is to um, mm -hmm. figure out what you're going to do with the property because you're going to have obviously everybody's got a lot of ideas. That is that going to be part of the uh, part of the function of the uh, interns? Um, yes. Not only will they conduct the visioning sessions where people can come forward and and speak about their um, their interests, but when we can determine how much interest exists they're actually going to be able to give us some kind of cost analysis for what that um, might mean for the community in order to accomplish it. And it is one of my goals, and I think the, the committee shares it, that we are not going to bring any projects of great cost to the community. We're going to try and see what we can do with the property so that it could maybe even generate some income. And there's some people with some great ideas for that. So. We're very cognizant of the fact that we're in a unique time and the, the Weathersfield supported the purchase of the farm. And now we have as a community an obligation to make it feasible, but not expensive. It was a nice summary. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kathy and I were talking right before the meeting and it was, um, there's a, a Boy Scout leader that our folks, <coughs> Kathy, is that it? Yes, um, one of the scout leaders of the names that I passed, uh, I passed on to Dan, Eric Powers. He's one of the Boy Scout troop leaders for Troop 85. And he's done a lot, of, a lot of work with the Boy Scouts with their Eagle projects, a lot of them being in town in the parks. So we've worked with him on that. And he's very interested in talking with the committee members about what the scouts can do um, in the future or the near future that um, right now they're busy working down at Wintergreen Woods where they just built a new kiosk at the trail there. And he had emailed me with, well, now that we've been there, we saw this, that, and the other thing that all need to be fixed and we wanna do that. And oh, by the way, we can do, we can fix the bridge and we can do this, but will you let us bring in our little um, mechanical pieces of equipment or, or little mini backhoes or something with some of our adults to come in. So, um, so I told them that I have to look into, but, um, and they're not looking for anything till the spring at least, or finishing up their fall projects. But not only was he excited about getting the scouts involved, he also had some ideas just for the property too. So he, and he wanted to know who to connect with. So I, I let them know that Dan had passed the names on. Well, Kathy, that sounds wonderful. <clears throat> yes to all of that. Yes. <laughs> yes, can't wait to have them involved. And I think that we can make it safe for them and they can be, be full participants. Um, I think it's going to progress at a certain, you know, there'll be certain things come first. Can we get the public-private partnership? Will the town agree to the public-private partnership? <clears throat> can we find out, you know, what it takes and how much it'll cost to restore it. And then can we bring in our own volunteers like the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts to do that. And hopefully the scout leader will get involved in the visioning sessions, bring those ideas forward. Great. I'll let them know that those are coming up. Thank you. I don't know if this is for Kathy or, or, uh, or Cindy, but the information you provided tonight, I'm just curious, and I, and I haven't been on the web, town's website in a long time, but I, I think it's great. And, and we obviously should be up to speed, but how does, is there any information on the website that kind of gives, I shouldn't say where the project's been, but how to get a hold of people, kind of the history where we are now and stuff, just so the public's as informed as we were tonight? You know, you bring up a really good point. We've been talking about that. On the town website, our minutes are, are archived and we have minutes just like you do, Zoom meeting minutes. Um, we've been talking about trying to launch January 1st, a Facebook page. And I can see that the Youth yep. Advisory Board just did that. So there's, you know, there's already a precedent for it. And then we could kind of do a monthly, you know, update as to what we're mm -hmm. doing and where we're going with it. So um, I will bring back to the committee and to Gary Evans, your suggestion that you'd like to see that. And I think we would too. Yeah. No, I think it builds the momentum and people know because there was money, taxpayer money spent and they probably all curious what's going on even with COVID. So, and it would, right. I think, build a, build some excitement around it too as, as you go forward. So I think, I think it's a good idea. Thank you. Cindy, that was great. Thank you. Um, when the initial presentation from the Hartford students, is that close to the committee members or is that public? 
Oh no, that's public. So there, okay. the, yeah. the, the staff will tell us how many students they were able to recruit, what, what kind of the nature of the pro project will be, what we can expect they will deliver by the end of the project, which will include a written report, a presentation to the town council, et cetera. But those visioning sessions will all be open to the public. We're okay. going to have to figure it out. It's probably going to have to be something like this, like Zoom or Survey Monkey online, so that people who can't Zoom or aren't comfortable doing this can actually give their input too. And then they'll try and do um, what do they call it, Dan? Like we stakeholders. They're, they'll try and actually reach out to yeah. people that are very invested. Like you, you would be a great group for them to interview because you've been so involved in the park system and so involved in getting community support for your projects um the sports leagues that they'd be a great group the ptos they, i mean so i think there's going to be a lot of ways suzanne that people are going to get to give input many different avenues for that so that we really come to some consensus yeah i mean we're, we're concerned with everything not only uh, what's going to be done on the land but the traffic it would bring to the neighborhood everything so we're, we don't want to ruin the neighborhood. So we're looking at everything. I would think the neighbors would be a stakeholder group too. Yeah. I mean, their concerns should be heard separately you know, from everybody else's so we can factor all of that in to what goes on. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Suzanne was also asking Cindy, like your November meeting when you're going to be talking to the uh, students or to the people from the university if that meeting is open to the public. Oh yes, I'm sorry, Suzanne, I misunderstood you. Yes, all our meetings are just like this. You can, you can get on and just, you know, I'm sure that um, Gary will say hello or whatever and ask for your name and then write it on under your picture. But yes, anybody can attend our meetings. And, and if you can't see them, they're all archived and you can view them at your convenience too. Very good. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, you everything you do. I really appreciate it and looking forward to seeing this become a part of Weathersfield's parks. Yeah, very good. All Let's right. See. I'm logging off. To, if you can believe it, I have one more Zoom meeting tonight. All right. <laughs> before, okay. you go, before you go, Cindy, Dan had mentioned when we were talking earlier, if you wanted to listen to one agenda item where we were talking about uh, a partnership we're working with a group in town now on. Sure. I'd love to. If you have a couple minutes, we could, Dan, if you want, yeah. we could move that agenda item up. Let's move that up. It's the, I know it's here, I saw. Um, e on the agenda, old business. So if we can, uh, can I have a motion to move that up to the next agenda? So, so moved. I have a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Uh, Aye. All right. So this agenda item is old business update on the Millwood's footbridge. So Kathy's gonna give us an update on that. And just for Cindy's background, <clears throat> we've been working with a group in town, Grants Way Foundation, that is a, a group of residents in town and friends um, trying to do something in memory of a, um, a young man that passed away that played men's softball. And the family and the friends got together and wanted to do something in his memory that had something to do with one of the softball fields in Millwoods Park. So when they came and talked to, talk, <clears throat> excuse me, talked to the board, um, they were looking at something on softball field number two, which is right behind the tennis courts in Millwoods. And men's softball uses that softball field and softball field number one, which is the lighted field in the, the back end of the park. And those two fields are not connected. They're, they're separated by a brook. So our master plan had showed in the future to build a footbridge over the brook. So they're looking at building the footbridge so they could call it Grant's Way, the foot, and also doing something with the field, some improvements and putting up a memorial sign and things of that nature. Now, surprisingly, a footbridge costs a lot of money over a bridge only because you have to deal with flooding and wetlands and all that good stuff. So an initial very basic ballpark figure was about, about $120,000 to do it. Mm -hmm. right. So they've That's been fundraising. Yeah, they've been fundraising now for 
five years? Am I, it's probably at least five years where they've done softball tournaments and golf tournaments and different things. And, um, and I'm giving the board an update because we'd probably do an update about once or twice a year um, to see where the group is. They kind of touch base with me. And so when I found out this fall, I finally got back to them. They were just gonna have their, they had postponed their, their golf tournament until the fall. They usually do it in the spring. And what they told me about the golf tournament, it was gonna, I think I talked to them on a Wednesday and it was gonna be that weekend. They were, they, they were, um, they had so many people attending because of COVID, because you could play golf. They had to go to other golf courses to get golf carts. So they were really pleased with the number that they had for the tournament. And they were thought they were close to their fundraising. They're getting very close to where their, their fundraising um, can help pay for the bridge. When we thought they were close, um, the board approved and we submitted a capital improvement request from the town for $20,000, not as a match, but to help with it. Because if they're raising 100,000, 20,000 is only a small piece of that. So, um, so that's ongoing and they're gonna get back to me shortly to let me know where they are with dollars. And last year about this time, they had gone to a local um, engineering firm to see if they could give them a, um, a plan, a rough plan of what the bridge would look like and a more actual cost of what we're looking at. And um, because of everything happening, um, we checked in with the architect, uh, with the engineer this, uh, this oh, I think it was the end of September, beginning of October, and they're ready to have a sit down and kind of discuss the next stages to go with the bridge. So I think we're gonna begin to look at some real numbers and they're, they're trying to work with an engineering firm that might some, do some of this as pro bono. So that's kind of where we are with it and for the board too. But the, um, the foundation people are pretty excited. They think they're close. And we just have to really see what it's gonna cost to put a footbridge over. And we want the bridge to be wide enough to be handicapped accessible. It'll not only connect the two fields, but it'll make a really nice loop if you wanna walk around the park, because you'll also be able to pull, that brook goes over where the little stream is. That's a pretty area of the park that most people don't get to see. Sounds like it'll be a real enhancement. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty much everything really done in the park in the last 10 years. The town hasn't paid for much of it. It's been a lot of volunteers doing everything, really. So I think that's the way to go to get something done. You have to get somebody interested in it. But you have to have a plan first. But that's why the plan is so important. Um, so they're close to 100,000 in Kathy. I, I think they are. I try not to ask them. I like them to be able to tell me where they are. Mm -hmm. And that project started with them coming to the board, the board saying it was a great idea. We have the footbridge in the plan and the board recommending to the council that they give the fundraising, um, found the foundation that the okay, yep, if you raise the money and we do it according to all the right way, the council would support it. And they Kathy, did put the, like $20,000 up too, which was pretty good. So that 20,000 is a firm commitment because if the bridge comes in at 150 with the town, the 20,000 is kind of a firm. That's what the town was willing to, as high as they- Yeah, that's set aside in the in the capital budget now. Okay. And I'm always anxious to spend the money, so. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everyone for having me. Good luck with everything. Thanks, Cindy. I'll see you at the meeting in another week or so. Okay. Bye, all. Yeah, Join bye. us. Uh, we always meet on the first Monday. First Monday, and it's at 5 o'clock or 5.30? 5.30, I think. Yes, yeah, 5 5 5.30. 5.30 on the first Monday. So we'd love to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Thanks, Thanks Cindy. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, let's continue with the agenda. The minute of September 24th. Any changes, updates? I move to approve. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Seconded.
I, I think I did. I, I believe I did. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, monthly report. Let's see here. We hmm. fixed the um, cracks on Greenfield. There was must have been 30 kids on it yesterday when I drove by. It was absolutely mobbed with kids. Hmm. I couldn't believe all the kids on it. They were older. They weren't, you know, they weren't young kids. They were older. Yeah. Yep, we've heard that's become popular. Yeah, I mean, it was... <laughs> And we also, when we did, we did the standish basketball court and the tennis courts. And um, I got I got an email from a, a, a resident in town, her and her um, husband, thanking the town for doing the tennis courts because it they live in Old Weathersfield, so it's only a 10 minute walk for them, and they were very appreciative. It's not a lot of times we get an actual email saying thanks that the courts were great. And right. we've been working with a resident in town who, who plays pickleball, and we did put the pickleball lines on those tennis courts, and the net is adjustable. And um, that gentleman emailed me to say, now that we have the pickleball courts, would you like to advertise them on the national pickleball site? So I was a little like, oh, do we want to tell everybody yet while they're brand new, or do we want to maybe wait a little bit? and let the residents use it first. Well, I'm delaying a little bit. I think that would be a great idea to do. I think though, I want the word to get out. We're letting the word get out by word of mouth uh, about the uh, courts. So um, we're starting to see people using them both for tennis again and for pickleball. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, any other comments? Okay. Um, letters and announcements. Any um, any letters and announcements, Kathy? I just added in the meeting dates for 2021. So those are those are on your member list. Yep. So they show this year's dates and then next year's dates, which are always the fourth Thursday, on, on, uh, except for November and December, where we don't conflict with the holiday. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Uh, we did all business already. Um, new business. The COVID entrance improvement. Yeah, I wanted to let you all know that um, as part of our plan, once we got the boat ramp done down there and the parking lot all set, uh, for the past, um, if you recall, when we put the boat ramp in, that was kind of just before Labor Day of two summers ago, or this past summer and the summer before, so 2019. So we went through the boating season this year, putting up cones and barricades to kind of create a pretend island as you enter the park so that we would push traffic farther into the park before you can make a left-hand turn, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. So I, the engineering department is working with us to actually design a plan. This is the preliminary plan and we're just starting to talk to people about the plan. I have to talk to our physical services people, but we wanted to bring it to the park board just to make you aware of what we're looking at, to literally create a little grass mini island from where the island is as you enter the parking lot and carry it forward pretty much to where the shed has been. So to carry it that far. And our goal is to move the shed from where it is onto that island. So when you drive in, the driver is on, the shed is on the driver's side. And uh, we think we can bring power to the shed by stringing the power line down along the island. So that, that's our preliminary plan that we're working on. And I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention as we begin, begin the process. It's preliminary. I'm working with the engineer, as I said. Eventually, we'll come back with, uh, and we're looking for feedback too. That, that's why I'm bringing it here. Eventually, it'll end up getting a, a, a probably a little better design and we'll go um, 
we'll have to go through historic district planning and zoning and the wetlands, the whole crew. So it's something we want to see if we can't maybe go to those commissions over the winter. That's kind of what we're thinking of. Kathy, it's not a problem that that area floods. Well, like right we have to design. Yeah. Yeah, the we have to. It comes up there. Yeah. Yeah, we have to design for that. And you're going to elevate it or something? Grass and stuff. Yeah. I'm. I'm not sure we're working with the engineer. He thinks we can just put an island, possibly with a little curb around it, but we're. We're in the preliminary stage, but that's a good point that it has to be looked at. I'm sort of envisioning maybe a, a tree or two on the little island, maybe, but mm -hmm. or at least some landscaping. We're trying to make that area beautify that area too. Mm -hmm. Kathy, how, how did the, I know this year they kind of painted the, I'll call them temporary lines for people because as we know, people just kind of park all over the place. Um, how did that work out? That worked out really well. People actually use the parking spaces. Yeah, that's good. So we, what we just have to do is make sure we keep it up during the summer because once it fades, yeah. you got to repaint it. Yeah. Because there again, it's not pavement and it's just it's dirt and a crushed stone and gravel. But it, it, it did work out really well. And um, we're still getting feedback about which way they want the lines to go. It's the most amazing thing. Everybody is 50-50 as to which way you slant based on how you're going to pull in with your boat and trailer. And, and, and any funding for this, there's funds in the in this account to take care of this stuff, if I recall. As that part is of that. correct, yes. Right. Yeah, because of the boating fees, we've been saving them up over several years. And so um, whatever the work would cost, we and again, we'd even end up having to go to council to get permission to do the work and to spend that money out of the account, but that would be the process. Um, okay, uh, fall programs update. Oops. So I just, um, let's see, with the fall programs, they've been going on Obviously we have uh, less people than we've had in the past, but we like the fact that we are running the programs and we're getting good feedback back from people. And we're actually finding, uh, like for instance, we're doing an after school therapeutic recreation program, our two days a week program. And um, we're seeing that the, um, the students are coming gradually. You know, we started out with five, we're probably up to eight. We anticipate getting to 12 and then we'll see where we are. But it's, it's. I think everybody's waiting to see what, what transpires with this virus. But so it's been a gradual increase. So that's been a good sign. So we're looking now to plan for a, um, we originally were stopping programs in um, November with a lot of things. And we might look to continue some senior citizen programs virtually and some fitness programs in person and virtually in December, just to try and keep people staying fit for when we pick up again in January. Okay. Did I miss anything, Mary, with uh, programs? So we're trying to, we're still on hold with the pool because the school is still wants to wait until they go back to bringing all the kids back. So they're trying to be very cautious about the number of people in the building and who's in there. They haven't opened the building to any outside group yet. It's strictly school and pretty much just school. Um, I did have to ask you a question. Is the, um, the exercise weight room at the community center, is that open to the public or no? We're going to start that in November. Okay. Yep. We're just getting the word out um, the end of this month. Uh, for registration. And the way that's going to work is that um, for this year, for, for now, we're going to allow people to register for it. I think, I can't remember what it is. It's like $20 for six weeks or whatever it is. But you're going to have to call the community center to make a reservation because we're only going to allow four people at a time. And Mary actually <laughs> had a suggestion that we should also ask them what machine they want to use I believe that was the case, Mary, right? Yeah, there's only two treadmills. They're very, they're, they are the single most popular pieces of equipment. So if you don't want to take a reservation and waste somebody's time, if that's what they specifically were looking for. So it's, you know, it's, it's learning to 
live in the COVID world. It's another question I'll ask when they're making a reservation and hopefully we'll keep people happy and active. Very good. So that's what we're doing. All right. All right, field use for the fall season. How's that going? Uh, pretty good. Um, the groups that um, the groups that we told you earlier, they're they're all playing. Um, so that that is again, uh, men's softball will be finishing up the end of uh, this month, the end of October. Pretty much everything is going to finish the end of October, the last weekend in October, with um, the high school if they're in playoffs, depending on what that looks like, they'll probably go into November. Mm -hmm. But we haven't heard. Um, too many issues, um, and I haven't gotten many complaints, so that's usually a good thing if things are just moving along. And Little League, both um, softball and baseball, they've gone, usually they end sometime earlier in October. They're going through the end of the month. Uh, field hockey is, field hockey has been able to use Catone on Sundays, so they've been up at Catone. Um, so pretty much um, I think a quieter season, but I haven't heard a lot. Mm -hmm. And right. and they're using the fields. I should say that they are using the fields. Very good. And uh, right now everything's still going. You know, hopefully there's not too many COVID problems where they can finish the fall season. Yeah, I've I've only heard of. Let me stop and think. Um, the end of August. We had one one reporting with men's softball, but mm -hmm. luckily that individual had not been with the team in enough days, so they didn't even have to quarantine. So mm -hmm. that was good. And I've heard one about um, youth soccer may have had one, and um, there may be some students quarantined for that. I know uh, my son got a game canceled. He was doing a game in Weathersfield, but they called him. I don't know, 15 minutes before the game, before it to leave. And it was the other team. It wasn't anybody from Weathersfield that had it. Okay. So they called and you know, called off the game. So, I mean, it's happening. You don't really hear about it, but it, it's happening. Yeah, it's it's out there. And, you know, but hopefully people are doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned earlier, for every youth sport group, we give them a list of protocols and guidelines, and they have to sign off on them. So mm -hmm. that they're letting us know that they're following um, protocols. Yeah, very good. All right, uh, let's see here. The Solomon Wells House. Any updates? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I wanted to 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 bring this to the board to think about. We asked the caretaker to go in and look and see how many people could we fit with social distancing in the Wells House, and we think we could fit eh, about twenty in the, if you can picture the big main room. Yeah. And we have had people call in just to see if it was gonna be open or not. And I wanted to see what the board thought if, if we opened it to the 20 people and hopefully people are honest with us because we will have the caretaker there checking and we'll let them know that. If you felt it was appropriate to give it a try, uh, I'd like to still charge the same amount of money if you thought that was reasonable. Um, only because we still have the same costs. Uh, the costs don't change whether we have 20 people. It normally can hold like 50. So we're looking at 20 and uh, we're, we're staff, we're evaluating it now, but I thought I'd get some input from the board. And I know, Mary, we've talked a lot about the Wells House and um, I don't know what, you know, she's had a lot of experience with it just to get some input too, not to put you on the spot, Mary. But if there was any any thoughts that anybody had, or, or if they're hearing, we're, the community center we've opened on a similar basis, but the banquet room is a much larger room. Mm -hmm. Kathy, what's the cost of the Solomon Wells? I believe for four hours, I think it's a hundred. Oh gosh, I'm going to look it up. Let me just. Mary, Mary Mahar, uh, what do you think about this? No, 
no, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm glad I'm in my office. This is good. Let's see. It's it's Sunday through Saturday for any type of um, party is $175 for a three hour minimum, which would, and then if it's weekdays in the morning or afternoon, it's $15 for a morning or $15 for an afternoon. And if it's a Monday to, through Friday night for a three hour minimum, it's $50. Kath, Kathy, would that pose right now, does a caretaker just do the cleaning of that? Yes. Typically? Would yeah. that pose any, you know, different cleaning protocols as far as because of COVID? That would be the only question I would have. Would it be different? I mean, a different cost because you might have to bring somebody in to make sure it's sanitized in a different way. No, we've talked to the <clears throat> caretaker and um, we can connect him up with the um, school district maintenance supervisor for custodians. And he's trained all our different staff that have had to clean our other facilities. So he could do the cleaning because it would only be one cleaning prior right. to the group coming in. Should we have a morning and an evening, he'd have to clean again. But we'd be using the same products we're using throughout the town. You you had indicated that you've had calls because there is interest in it. People have been interested. Yeah, I don't know that people are interested in just 20 people. But um, people have called to, particularly for the holiday, the Christmas, they were, I think they always, the holiday, they always look, but I don't know if they'll be interested in just 20 people. What What do you normally, what would you normally allow in there if you didn't have COVID? How many? 50. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed that. That's I okay. think it's pretty a, a reasonable number though, Kathy, because right, because the in like restaurants right now are at half capacity inside. So that's about, I mean, you could maybe go to 25 based on that guideline, but if the space can't fit it, then can't fit it. Yeah. I mean, I don't I, have a I, problem with it as long as you tell everybody up front, you get 20, it's, you know, this is the cost and if they want to pay you, they pay you. And you think it's okay, because I think it's okay to use the same amount of money because it's, it's a, um, what do I want to say? There's not many places you can do something. Right. And if anything, the cost is more now because of increased cleaning products. And I think people are used to are OK with spending that. Yeah, um, I, I would support and leave the price the same and see what happens. If nobody rents it, at least it's it's an option. OK. Well, I appreciate the well, I, um Go for it. I think in, in this time, I personally would rather have people in another space than my own you know, 20 people in my own home because you know a place like that is going to be sanitized. So I, I think there's that appeal. So I, you know, I agree that that price is worth it when you think about it from that perspective. Right. That's a good point. All right. We found out we can even, we can even the, the type of cleaner that we use and stuff, cause, cause the, the room is carpeted, that we can even put that on the carpet without hurting the carpet. So our maintenance and custodial supervisor has been very helpful to us. That that wouldn't change how you operate the farmer's market. You wouldn't open it up for any of that though, correct? I mean, it's not open right now for the farmer's market. We didn't open the house for the farmer's market. Okay, and you wouldn't you wouldn't at this point either? Is that the plan? We had the farmer's market. We just brought in a portal app. Okay. It's, the market's done now too. Yeah. It had it okay. last week. All right. Very good. Let's see. Um, board member comments. Any comments? Anything? No. I mean, there's one thing I will say. I think I said last meeting too. Um, you know, I definitely noticed there's a lot of people fishing off the dock. So maybe you build in a trap door or something, <laughs> and Mike can push the button every time he sees them on the, uh, on the dock fishing or something. But uh, whatever we're doing, we they're just not staying off the docks to fish. So I don't know what we can do. Uh, I mean, it's not bad when you, there's not much boating going on, but when there's boating going on, it's a problem. So I don't know if anybody's got any ideas at all at this point, uh, but uh, it, 
I mean, this one day there's literally 10 people fishing off the dock when I walked down there. I'm like, really? What if we put a sign at the beginning of the dock that said $10 to fish from the dock? <laughs> you have people doing a double take. Right? And we could build up the kitty for the, uh, you know, for the coat park and all. Well, uh, I could buy a fishing dock. Yeah. 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 I, I only have one comment to follow up on Suzanne's last time we were asking about the airport and the tree trimming. Did you happen to yeah. find anything about that, Kathy? I did actually um, have that on my list to bring up too, so thank you. Um, tonight, just tonight, there was a, a Brainerd Airport Advisory Board meeting where they were going to get information from the airport people about what the proposal was. So the manager cheers that committee and he was gonna let me know the results after they at least found out what's going on. So he's dialed into that and is gonna keep me posted and I can keep the board members posted as soon as we get some, some actual information. He wasn't sure what the plan was or what they were looking to do and whether or not it was going to be clear cutting or they were going to do different things or what was what what exactly were all the plans so as soon as i get that i will be happy to share that with the board members okay very good anything else kathy when are we when will we hear about winter sports oh that's a really good question um if you're looking at like indoor youth sports so far, they're not releasing any of the schools. Um, and I'm not sure, if you were to ask me to guess, I might say maybe January, but that's not based on any facts whatsoever. Okay. I, they're looking, the superintendent mentioned that they're looking at the planning phase for the high school indoor sports. And the CIAC has given them permission to look into the planning of the sports, but hasn't actually given permission for the sports. Gotcha. And he didn't bring up anything in today's meeting about sports um, because all they did was they said, I think they came out with a date with the possibility of starting practice, but they didn't say you had permission to start practice. They just said, this might be what we're looking at. And I, I really think it's all gonna go what everybody calls the metrics and, and how uh, the virus is spreading. Mm -hmm. But I haven't gotten anything official yet. We get a lot of calls about youth basketball. That's the big one. And we just don't know yet because we know that we're, we're allowing, we're, be, we're Beginning to look at the community center gym and when might it be available, but there's no way we can run a youth basketball program out of that. It's just not big enough and there's not enough space in there. So it could be an all or none thing, like you can't do it in the community center gym and the schools might not be available. Um, but the, on, the, on the flip side of that, I probably didn't, I may have mentioned this a long time ago, they've just recently, it's been in the works for about a year, but they just transferred a position in the school district that was the person that worked for the school district that did all the booking, booking and the rentals of all the school facilities. And they transferred all the custodians over a couple of years ago, but they never transferred over the person who does all the bookings and the rentals and kind of manages all that. And it's been in the works for a year to move that position to the town. And um, Parks and Rec got lucky that they put the position in our department. So I'm going to know right away when they start allowing people to book the schools. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a definite in. <laughs> and we're going to keep an eye on that. And I keep telling Joanne that when they start telling you, because the schools are the ones that have to open them. It's, it's certainly not on us. And... Um, so we, we'll know when the calls come in or she gets the call to say that we're gonna open up this school or something. Okay. But I have not heard yet, I'm sorry. That was very a long-winded answer. Yeah. But I, I do have I, another staff member, so that's good. That's good, <laughs> yeah. I know the uh, high school sports, for instance, basketball, um, my son goes to Xavier and they 
cut their uh, schedule down from 20 games to I think 15. So the, the seasons are going to be shortened for a lot of these sports. They're cutting out, I don't know, 20, 25% of the games. And I don't know if they're even going to have tournaments or anything else. So, uh, man, they're keeping an eye on everything. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of a crapshoot depending on what's going on. If, and again, if I hear news on that, I can send that out. I don't have to wait for a board meeting if that, if you'd like to hear that as soon as we get it. All right, dear. Okay, any other comments? No, good. All right, uh, Harbor, Man Harbor Management Commission, Mike is on, our Harbor Master. Mike, you there? Mike? <laughs> Mike, can you hear us? I, I will send Mike, can back. you unmute? The meeting must have been so exciting for him. <laughs> not, not at all. I'm calling him. Okay. Yeah, because he was on earlier. He's showing his on. He's probably kicking the fisherman off the dock. <laughs> Charging him 10 bucks. Not looking good. Mike, if you could hear us or if you want to shoot me an email, I'll check. I got his voicemail. I'll send him a text. That's the best I can do. Because he might be on the same phone you're trying to call anyway, right? Right, yeah. right. We're waiting for you to unmute and talk at the meeting. We were going to renew his contract tonight, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Double his pay. <laughs> Let's see if we can give him a minute. If not, we'll go through it. We had our uh, club meeting, um, what was it, last Wednesday. It was supposed to be Tuesday, but because of bad weather and it being an out outdoor meeting, there we are, and there's Mike there, and uh, the uh, Deputy Harbor Master, um, Derek, and all of a sudden there was a boat going, I want to say maybe 15 miles an hour, just doing laps around the entire cove, and all we could do was look, and I mean, there, it's a no-wake zone, so you're not supposed to go over like five or six miles an hour max, and we're just looking, and Mike, you jump in the boat, or, you know, but um, nobody was able to do anything, obviously. Kathy I, Kathy, I know Mike's not on, but do you know the status of the boat repairs? Yep, we found out that the motor's history. So we need to get a, a motor. Oh my God. So we're, we're looking at the cost of a new motor versus the cost of a used motor. And um, so we are looking at that information and evaluating it. Um, a new motor is somewhere in the vicinity of fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and a used motor that's of the similar make um, is it's a two thousand and where am I two thousand and three for possibly about four thousand with labor to put to get it all set up. So we're trying to decide which way to go with that. And I'd, I'd take input again from the board, some of our boaters. All right. You, you know, um, I deal with uh, some of the, I don't want to how to put this. I deal with some car dealerships. They also sell boats and um, they sell a lot of boats. So uh, if I can remember, I'm going to make a call to one of them tomorrow and say, tell them our plight and see if there's any interest in helping us. All right, That'd yeah, be great. a long shot, but I've actually done, uh, I've helped the general manager for one of these uh, boat dealers out of lot. So I'm gonna ask him if he can uh, 
you know, or you know, give us, you don't give it for free, but give us a deal on something or recommend something so we don't keep having to address this every two years. I could send you like the boat model and the- yeah, send me that. Um, and what we need, like <laughs> the type of boat it is, the way they explained it to me, it would need to be a 150 horsepower motor. Okay, yeah, send me the specs and I'll send it to you. Okay. No, that would be great. Yeah, no. no it's no harm in asking. I can ask. I might do nothing for us, but at least I can ask. All right. Um, what else is on here? Don't think of a whole month. Um, so the boat it looks like the buoys are in the right spot. Well, the water hasn't been too high, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, any other issues? Uh, they started clearing out the boats. Um, and I don't know, see any other issues here. Yeah, I know we're, we talked about reviewing the uh, regulations, which is putting that off. So um, if we have any clear definition on, I think our fear has all been to, if they issue a ticket or something, in enforcement items, how does that happen? I think that's been all of our questions. And we don't want to put the harbor masters in peril of getting into a fight or an argument with these people. Um, so any direction on that or any ideas? I'm, I haven't had a chance to pull out all the information that came up, but maybe I can do that for the November meeting and we could make a decision whether or not we want to move forward with any of them. Or if you want a little mini subcommittee to look at them and bring them to the board. Way back when, when this all started, Mike had offered, Mike Beasy had offered to, to kind of work with it. And maybe we could, if you're still interested, Mike, maybe we could um, talk about it and bring a recommendation back to the board and anyone else that was interested. If you're sure. still- oh, I'd, I'd still be willing. I personally, I'd like to, I think, I don't know how the rest of the group feels, but. I'd like to, we should probably put it to rest before the next boating season because it's been kind of on the on the bubble. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm more than willing, I can talk, you know, get together with Kathy and, and Mike and then sure we can come up with something over the next couple meetings so we can make a decision one way or the other on where we're going to go. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you want to involve Tom too, I know he does a lot of boating. Yep. <laughs> we'll, we'll get him, we'll bring him in a loop. Yeah. <laughs> and you're right, Mike. I mean, it's certainly with, sports not being as active as in previous years it's perfect we have an opportunity to do, get this done so yeah. so Sounds mike good. and tom anybody else interested or is everybody good i can certainly i don't offer much boating wise but we'll give input if you want it <laughs> perfect Here, i'll put you no we got our committee. Good. yeah um what i'll do is i'll get together the information send it all out again to the little subcommittee, give you guys a chance to review it, and then we could set up a Zoom meeting as to whatever is convenient. Kathy, did you ever share that with the police department to get any feedback from them? I'd have to go back and look, Mike. Part of me thinks yes, and part of me, I, I think we might have had a just a off the record conversation about it. I don't, I don't know that we got into all the specifics. I think we might have told them that um, we were looking into it, but I could certainly get their opinion. Yeah, it would be helpful for us before we start spending a lot of time on something that might have no, no future. Right, that's true. Kathy, is it, this might be a topic for the subcommittee, but um, is it possible to do like not physically hand someone a ticket, but I'm thinking like a equivalent of a red light camera, like that boat that was speeding in the, I mean, you can see the, their plate number on the side of the boat. Can you, can we maybe work a system like that instead that might be a compromise between safety and um, actually being able to find people who are breaking the rules? It's certainly something we could ask the question. Yeah. My only thing also, if Mike was on, I wanted to thank him and Derek for stepping up. It was their first official season. So even though they probably didn't have a boat, I know the effort was was there. And I think uh, 
all the pain and suffering we went into to get Harbor Masters, it's a good thing to have those folks on board. We just got to give them the tools and equipment to do their job. Yeah, I agree. Okay, um, any other comments? Good, all right. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn then? I'll make a motion. Second. Beat you. Oh. <laughs> all right, all those in favor. Aye. 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 All right, we'll see you guys next month. Thank, Thank you, you all of you. Thank you all very much. Mike Osmian, if you can hear me, I'll be in touch about the, uh, the, the ordinances and stuff. All right. All right, good night, everybody. Stop the recording. Hi. Hey, hon. Here we go.